Clare 118, Limerick 315. Limerick have beaten Clare in Ennis. And what a win. What a comeback. What a turnaround from Limerick. It's not the first time we said that. And it probably won't be the last time we say that. In the game that everybody was looking forward to this weekend, everybody was speaking about it. Clare versus Limerick. Massive rival uh, rivalry and everything else. Limerick bidding for six in a row in Munster, bidding for five in a row in the All Ireland series. Clare coming in on the back of having won the Allianz National Hurling League. And look, it was a strange game because for large parts, I actually don't think it was actually maybe as good as the game as we would have thought it to be. I think both sides, to a certain degree, struggled quite early on. I mean, Limerick shooting was so poor. They below 50% accuracy in terms of shooting in the first half. At the start of the second half, they were absolutely dreadful as well. The only thing scored one point in the opening 15 to 20 minutes, um, and that wasn't even from play. Limerick were all over the place, but at the same time, Clare did not take advantage of that. They did not take advantage of that. There was so many chances, so many areas where, where Clare could have punished Limerick even further, and they just didn't take it. And quite remarkable, Clare were leading eight points with about 16 minutes to go in this game. They bring Tony Kelly on. There's a massive roar from the crowd. And you're thinking, this is only going to end one way now. This is only going to end one way. Uh, and Clare are going to win the game. But quite incredibly, Limerick managed to come back and win the game. Um, and genuinely, I'm speechless, to be honest with you, because for about 50, 55 minutes, 53 minutes, this was arguably one of the worst Limerick performances I'd ever seen under John Coyley. They could barely string a pass together. They kept hitting it long in, into their forwards, into both Galan and Hegarty. They kept getting turned over. Um, shooting was absolutely dreadful. Defensively, they weren't uh, particularly... Uh, defensively, they were actually they were actually doing all right. I think that was the positive with Limerick. They were keeping themselves in the game. But even in saying that, Clare were missing chances and missing opportunities. You know, they had three or four wides right at the start of the first half or, or the start of the second half, which could have pushed Clare's lead even further. Um, and, and and they weren't taking advantage of it. They certainly weren't taking advantage of that. Like even looking at the third quarter straight after half time, this was the period of play where, where Limerick were really, really struggling. They were struggling in the first half for large parts, but start the second half. Like just looking at it here, Clare scored what? Just looking at a few of my notes here. They scored two points in that period. And Limerick only Limerick only scored once in that in that time period. And that was a, a free. Um Claire hit three on Claire hit three on the bounce from the 51st minute to the 53rd minute. Aiden McCarthy, uh Maury, and then Mark Rogers all getting on the score sheet. And then from the 53rd minute onwards, when Dunnick O'Dalling scored, Limerick just completely took over the game and so many times we've seen this we saw it in the all Ireland final last year versus Kilkenny we saw versus Galway in the in the all Ireland semi-final you were thinking like Limerick are going to have to find something from absolutely nothing here because they were really really poor they were struggling they weren't in the game um, and look maybe an element of fortune like Jeremy Burns like from that free is he going for that like does he mean to play that like on top of Aaron Galan you feel like he probably maybe did because Aaron Glan was so alert and alive to it, um, but it was a massive risk because if that doesn't work out, you're you know you you're missing the opportunity. Like that made it a three point game. You miss that opportunity, it stays as a six point game. So it was risky, but it completely paid off. The third goal as well was it a square ball? Replay certainly suggested that it, maybe it was a square ball. Um, but again, I think we need to see that back and we need to see where did Aaron Glan start when uh, the ball was obviously hit in because if he starts outside the square then it's not obviously not a square ball if he if he's inside the square when the ball uh, com, you know is is shot obviously towards the goal then it is a square ball so it will be interesting to see that back but it, it looked like it may have been a square ball but then again the umpires are right there the referee is there you trust that they make the right decision uh, in fairness and like it was a tough day for Limerick. They gave away so many silly frees in the first half. Um, obviously the crowd and everything else weren't too happy with the referee. I do think there was a few frees he didn't give Limerick's way, and he probably it did maybe seem like he was slightly favouring Clare ever so slightly. But I do think a lot of them frees that Column Lines gave in the first half were completely justifiable for whatever reason. He just didn't really seem to give the frees the, the opposite way when Limerick maybe should have got them. Um. So that was maybe a little bit frustrating from a Limerick perspective. But 
they just found their groove and they found a way to turn it on. And it's for me, it's what makes them the greatest hurling team of all time, in my opinion. Because yes, you look at skill levels, you look at ability, you look at technical brilliance. And look, Limerick have that, obviously, in terms of Aaron Galan, in terms of players like Tom Morrissey, who particularly didn't play well today. Keen Lynch was fairly anonymous for about, uh, you know, 50, 50. I mean, the whole Limerick team were were very poor for about 50, 60 minutes. Um, but they have talent in abundance, but their ability to find it within themselves, to turn it around when their backs are against the wall. I haven't seen many teams able to do that. The only other teams I can think of is the great Kilkenny Hurland team who were in that position you know, on numerous times before. But then again, even that great Kilkenny side, I can't remember them have it, you know, playing so poorly and then just like a flick of a switch and they just turn it on. Like it was almost like Limerick had this pre-planned. Like it was almost like John Coyley and the and Paul Connerk and the Limerick backroom team said to them, you know, don't play for 50, 55 minutes and then for the final 15 we switch it on because that's how it looked. And look, I can't imagine that was the case because that would never, ever, ever make any sense. And Clare should have should have punished Limerick. They were eight ahead going into the final 15. They probably should have been further ahead. Um, do you know, like, but even at that, having an eight point lead, bringing Tony Kelly on, you would have imagined that Clare surely still would have had enough to see the game out. But that just completely didn't happen. Um, like, Hall O'Neill had some bright sparks for. For Limerick, for Clare, look, Aidan McCarthy was absolutely brilliant. One ten, he was absolutely sensational. Uh, I think he got took off late on uh, as well, and maybe in hindsight that was a bit of an error from Brian Lohan to to take him off. Maybe should have kept him on. Um, and all in all, like Clare, like Mark Rogers had some bright sparks. Shane O'Donnell was causing a lot of problems inside, um, but it just wasn't enough. And it feels like whatever you throw at this Limerick team, like they always seem to find an answer and maybe you're nearly better to not go so far in front because it just, it awakes the beast. And and the, and once the beast has woken up, they they turn it on. They absolutely turn it on. And as I said, the Dublin footballers, who you know, who won six in a row, you know, the great Cork ladies football team, the great Kilkenny hurlers, like this, this Limerick side are, are, are on a trajectory possibly to overcome them. And, the way they, the mentality within themselves to be able to turn it around is just genuinely incredible. It, it really, really is. On a day where they weren't at the races at all. I mean, Groot Hegarty had some bright sparks in the first half, three points um, from him. Galan with uh, with two five. Um, obviously, the it looked like he did get a touch on the on the fur on the Jeremy Burns uh, puck in. So probably would credit him that goal uh, in fairness, but. Like Kyle Hayes wasn't really in the game. Um, Donegal Darling scored 1 1. What an impact he made coming off the bench. Adam English was absolutely brilliant as well, but just absolutely insane stuff there from uh, from a Limerick perspective. Uh, William says, You're a legend. Thank you very much. I'll uh, I'll take the compliments when they come. Um, I certainly will. But um, I, I think, I think you know, the, the people that really deserve to be legends is that Limerick team because to have the ability to, to come back like that. Um, you know, like I backed them to win the game in, in my preview show, but I certainly wasn't backing them with 10, 15, with, with, with 15, 20 minutes to go, you know, because they looked completely dead on their feet. Like everything just wasn't working for Limerick and Clare had the complete battle and in their own backyard as well. It must sting from a Clare perspective. It really, really must do, you know, could this set Clare back? We've seen teams in the past um, come into the championship on the back of winning the league start quite slow and not being able to recover. You just feel like this is a real mental dagger to this clear side. Um and it, it could set them back. It really, really could. And um for Limerick now, like I was watching them for large parts of that first half and second half. And genuinely the thoughts were going through my head. Limerick looked done here. And and look, there's three more games after this, but having been as poor as they were against Kilkenny, looking as poor as this, you thought I think they might be done here. I think they might genuinely be finished. And then all of a sudden, they turn it on. And don't get me wrong, if they had lost this game, I still would have backed them to get out of Munster. And I still think they would have probably, you know, they'll still go on to win the All Ireland or whatever. I still would have backed them to do that. But they just looked completely, they hadn't looked as poor as that under John Coyley. And the fact they were able to turn it around, I mean, you know, I know the term mentality monsters maybe has been trademarked for 
other sports and everything else. But I think that that term applies to this Limerick side. I mean, that was just genuinely un- unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. And I think Limerick now, they were look, they were favourites for the All Ireland and the Munster Championship before, but now that you know that favourites tag is even more affirmed, even more affirmed. Just absolutely incredible stuff. Uh, GQ says. Lim Nakabu, um, the heat may have caught them very hot day. Yeah, look, it was a very hot day, and Claire put a lot of energy uh, into you know the, the opening 45, 50 minutes, and and then completely fell dead on their feet. Um, did Claire bottle it? Like I've put that question out there. I'm not necessarily ne- I'm not necessarily saying that they have, but I'd just be curious to know people's opinions on that. Um, like they were eight points up, they did miss chances and they did miss opportunities, and you feel like. They should have punished uh, Limerick more in that third quarter. But they were eight points up. Do you know? They were eight points up with 15 minutes to go. Like, how did they not manage to see that game? Like, Limerick outscored Clare 3-5 to four points in the final 17 minutes. I mean, how how does that happen? Do you know what I mean? How does that happen? It's it, it's quite remarkable. But fair play, play to Limerick. Massive, massive win for them. They play Tipperary next. Um, so that will be you know, a game where Limerick can probably, you know, um, take a step closer towards a Munster final. And uh, I'm not too sure Clare play next, actually. Might be Cork, I think. Um, Just having a a, a quick look at it here. They do play Cork in Parky Cueve as well. And look, Cork, we'll see how Cork get on against Waterford. But all of a sudden for Clare, you know, like it's... They lose to Cork next time out. And... Backs are against the wall. They really, really are. So, so there we go. Uh, Claire didn't bottle it very little between those these three these teams for three years. Yeah, look, that 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 is a fair point. Um, what what you would say though is that there's usually only been a point in the difference, and three points this time around having been eight points up, like it, it just will feel like a massive, massive pill to swallow. But fair play to to Limerick for for getting over the line. Um, and it's very, very hard from here to see to see them be stopped. But yeah, look, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I'd be curious to know people's opinions in the comments down below. Man of the match is such a strange one because I think Aidan McCarthy was was outstanding really for um you know large parts of this game, scoring 110. Obviously, a good few of them were from freeze, but his goals obviously from play, a couple of other big points from from play as well. Um but Glan with two five, like turning up in in the big big moments, you probably would have to maybe edge it towards him. But yeah, I'd be curious to know people's opinions um in in the comments. But yeah, what a win for for Limerick, heartbreak for Clare. It will be a bitter bitter pill for Clare fans going home this evening, no doubt about that. Because um, you know, like it's t- to have looked so in control and then lose it. But the most important thing for Clare is not to lose their heads now to regroup. Write this game off. Um, you know, Claire, Claire moving forward have the ability now to decide what they want to do with this game. Look at Limerick last year, lost at home to Claire, and Limerick still went on to win one star in the All Ireland. So Claire by no means are out of it. They they can they can still turn this around. They just have to um park this one, you know, realize where they went wrong and go out and put in a big performance in a week's time against Cork because um, if they were to carry, you know, this sort of um, those final 10, 15 minutes and carry the defeat and the the negative, the negativity and everything else from it into the court game, then maybe they they could they could be in a bit of trouble there. So we'll have to uh, we'll have to wait and see. Dan says uh, or Don says massive confidence boost towards the uh, drive for five. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean. Um, yeah, like just an incredible um turnaround, really. And it could, you know, this this result has the ability to define both team seasons. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens. But yeah, look, we'll we'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I'll be back live after the Mayo Russ Common game. So uh, make sure to uh, tune into that. My name is Aaron. Hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll speak to you all soon.